Before we kick off this event, I need to know where my sixth graders are. Where are my sixth graders in the audience? Um, where are my seventh graders? My eighth graders better knock this out of the park. Where are my eighth graders? Fantastic. Um, before we kick off this amazing, amazing event, um, let's just kind of do a little warm-up activity here. Let's start off by clapping our hands slow and soft. Everybody. A little faster. A little faster. A little louder. A little lower. A little lower. Faster. Lower. All right. So check it out, guys. I don't know if you were aware, but National Pay It Forward Day was last Saturday. That doesn't matter because we're going to be celebrating that here today. I am so, so, so proud of all the students and staff um, as we have raised a ton of money for our Pay It Forward event this year. So paying it forward should be something we consider every day. It's just general acts of kindness. And I know this year, this student body has knocked it out of the park of representing our core values. So without further ado, we've got some very special guests in our building today. Uh, we have Wanda Parent. I'm not sure if you all know Wanda Parent. Um, she's a local person who works at Jagger Mill full time. And in her spare time, she works at a ton of nonprofit organizations stuff, uh, such as Stuff the Bus and Right Brain Club. Um, so I'd like to introduce Wanda. Where's Wanda? Oh, there's Wanda. Everybody give Wanda a warm, warm welcome. And I want us to give a extra special warm welcome to very special visitors today, Angie and Mr. Lewis right here. So everybody give them a warm welcome. I'm going to be handing over the mic to our JMG kiddos. Hi, I'm Alicia, and this is Jersey, Isabella, and Vanessa. We are in the JMG program here at the junior high. In JMG, we do a lot of work in our school and community. We have a lot of opportunities to help other people. It's actually one of my favorite things about JMG. We've helped Wanda a lot, and she's so much fun to work with. Over the summer, summer <laughs> Wanda told Miss Hool about what? Today, introducing Wanda. No, today Wanda's going to talk. Yeah. Okay, today Wanda's going to talk about paying, it about paying it forward. Introducing Wanda Perrin. Indu introducing Wanda Perrin. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to try and talk close to the mic and loud so that hopefully everybody even up in the back can hear me. Um, good morning. My name's Wanda Parent. I work at Jagger Brothers Textile Mill. Um, I am also the volunteer director of Stuff the Bus School Supply Drive and the Right Brain Club. Um, for any of you who don't know what Stuff the Bus is, um, it's a nonprofit program that I took over about 11 years ago. Um, and we provide backpacks and school supplies to about 3,000 kids every year. Um, what that term volunteer director means, means it means I don't get paid. Um, I have no paid staff with the program and everything we do, um, including collecting supplies and passing out the backpacks, um, is done as volunteers and not paid. Um, and the reason for that is I could pay myself a salary but um, I want 100% of what comes into that program to go to the kids and to the teachers that need that help um, to make sure that they have the things they need to be successful in school. We provide backpacks and school supplies to about 1,000 kids in um, southern Maine, primarily Sanford, Acton, um, in our local community. But I also believe that we are citizens of the world. We are global citizens. And so my program also sends supplies to Ethiopia, Africa, to Nigeria, to Romania. Um, and this summer I have some backpacks going on a mission trip with Curtis Lake Church to Guatemala. Um, so remember that on your journey in life, that we're not only citizens here in Sanford, but we're also citizens who share a planet Earth. Um, and every child on that planet Earth and every citizen is important and they matter. Um, 
Let me find my place. So the other program I started about two years ago, um, and it's called Right Brain Club. Um, and the reason I'm telling you guys about these programs is these are opportunities for you to be citizens of Sanford, for you to volunteer and to participate. And I can promise you it's life-changing. Um, I know I couldn't do what I do without Ms. Houle and her JMG students. They are a critical part of my program. I can't, when I have a bus drive at Walmart and I'm collecting school supplies, I can't complete that task as a solo person. It's a team effort. Um, and Tara's students like Chloe and um, Cameron and a bunch of the others, they make it possible for me to do what I do for teachers and students in this school. So when you see them in the hallway and you, maybe you've been helped by Stuff the Bus or you have a younger brother or sister, um, or even a teacher who's been helped by Stuff the Bus. Please extend my thanks and your thanks to them because I could not do it without all of you. And I would love to see every single face in this room come volunteer for Stuff the Bus this summer. It's fun. Um, it, you get to work on your public skills of dealing with the public and dealing with people. Um, it's fun being on the bus sorting, sorting school supplies. Um, and you can ask any of the students that do it, they come back every year and they really enjoy it. And you can do that right through high school. This program helps children grade five through grade 12. And last year I also helped out a few college freshmen. Um, going to college is expensive. And for a freshman, they have to get everything they need to get set up. Um, and so I was contacted by a few college freshmen who said, hey, I need some help. Um, and that's what we're here for. That's what Stuff the Bus is here for. So the other program I love it's called Right Brain Club. <clears throat> and I saw a PBS documentary on um, our brains, on the left side of our brain and the right side of our brain. And it was speaking about how in this country especially, that we really don't um, educate and develop enough of that right side of the brain. And that's the creative side. When you grow up, you're gonna have a job, a career, hopefully. You're gonna go to college. And you're gonna have, those things are really important. But we also need other outlets to be a well-rounded and whole human being. We need painting and we need music. Find something you love or have a passion for. And I'm going to give you some advice today. Try it, you might like it. I am 53 years old and I play with Legos. I happen to love Legos. Um, when you come to Right Brain Club, we have 45 board games. I have every possible craft supply you could possibly think of. Um, this summer I'm planning a couple of field trips and all you have to do to participate in this, in this club is show up. That's it. Show up. It's no cost. Um, when you first come in we have a free snack time and the reason for that is to address some of out of school hunger that some kids experience during the summertime. So when you come you might some, have some watermelon or bananas or cut up cucumbers and then there's stations set up and you get to choose whatever activity you want to do. It's a relaxed fun, safe space to, for kids instead of having them hanging out on the street and maybe not making some great choices to coming and participating in this club. Um, I have an acoustic guitar and I have someone coming in to teach lessons. How about that? Free guitar lessons. If anybody wants to learn to play guitar. Um, we learn to play penny whistles. You know, the sky's the limit. If there's something you're interested in and I don't have it, tell me. Um, with Right Brain Club, we do literacy support. I love books. I love to read. Um, I had a learning disability throughout school, and I struggled to read. And when I read a book, it takes me a long time. But I pick up that book, I love the content of that book, and I finish that book. Um, with the literacy support, you might be mentoring a younger person and helping them with their reading. Um, I choose books that I want you to be excited about. If, I, if you have a book series you read, like per, maybe Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, if I, if I have it, please pick it up and read it. I always have extra books for kids to take home. Um, and kids earn coupons, especially the younger kids. This is a really good motivator. I have a prized treasure chest. So if they read five books, they get five coupons and they can go in that treasure chest and pick out prizes. Sometimes I know uh, Chloe is, is, has a favorite of, uh, we play prize bingo. So I'll put prizes out on the table and we'll play bingo. And how that works for the younger kids is remembering their numbers and seeing their numbers and be able to identify their numbers. So some, you know, a lot of times board games will have other uses than just a fun board game. Um, 
<clears throat> I'm very excited today to be here with my buddy Lewis. Lewis, can you say hi? Can you say hi? So Lewis is saying ball a lot today. Lewis just started playing Little League, so, and he's very excited about that. And I'm very excited to go to one of his games very soon. Um, so today I'm here to talk about kindness and giving back without expecting anything in return. That is the definition of true kindness, is when you reach out and you help someone or you do something for someone other than yourself, expecting nothing in return. Um, I don't get awards for what I do. Um, my thanks is when a kid goes to their teacher and says, look at my new backpack I just got from Stuff the Bus. And they're excited and they're not, they're not ashamed that they got help. They're proud that they got help. Our world today can be an interesting and at times a dark place, especially when negative people take to the internet places like Facebook and Twitter. But I'm here today to tell you that you have a choice on who you decide you will become in this world. No matter what life throws at you, you can choose kindness and paying it forward. My childhood was less than ideal. My father was an alcoholic who couldn't keep a job. He was verbally and physically abusive, among other things. He would very often look at me and tell me that I was worthless because I was a girl. In his eyes, girls weren't really valuable. My family always struggled for food and clothing, and we moved many times because we couldn't pay our rent. I suffered from depression as a teenager. I was one of 13 children in a blended family. That means my mom had some kids and my dad had some kids when they got together. Even as a young person, the same age as you are now, I knew I wanted to be something different. I wanted to be different than a lot of the adults that were in my home who chose drugs and alcohol and other things rather than kindness. I remembered being helped by people who didn't even know me, like the Salvation Army at Christmas time when I was a kid, and neighbors giving us food and clothing. This is how we made it as a family. When I was just eight or nine years old, I was really affected by the kindness of others, and it made a lasting impression on me, and was a key factor in the adult that I became. When I see someone in need, I can't just turn my back on them and not get involved like many others would do. I knew I wanted to help others someday and pay it forward. When I grew up, and to let every kid that I meet know that no matter what they come from, they matter to me. Being out in the community and volunteering a lot, I get to meet many different people. And one day, while at the Portland Pride Parade, I ran into some family, my niece Sam here, and her mom, Laura. Stand up, Laura, say hi to everybody. <laughs> Laura raised an awesome kid all on her own. And I met a very special little boy named Lewis and his mom, Angie. At this point, I'm going to have Angie come up and tell you a little bit about Lewis, um, about his, his early birth and about some of his medical stuff. And the reason this is important is because I need you to understand Angie's daily life and why she's a hero to me. So Lu Angie's going to describe kind of what Lewis's medical conditions are and about his birth just very briefly. Hi, my name is Angie. I am, hello, I'm 22 years old. And when I was 17, yes, sorry, I'm a little nervous. When I was 17 years old, I went into labor at 25 weeks, six days. So that's 14 weeks early, 99 days early, actually. Uh, he was two pounds, three ounces, and 13 inches long. Yes, you were. <laughs> he, he argues everything. He's, he argues he's everything. much bigger now. <laughs> yes, he's 26 pounds now. Still little, but this is my Lewis. He's my whole world. 
When he was two days old, he had a brain bleed, a grade three and a grade four, and that brain bleed never resolved. That is the reason why he has hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is water on the brain. He has, <laughs> it wasn't an O at the time, but that was like the least of my worries and when I thought that was the worst thing that could ever happen to him. When he was seven weeks old, he had um, meningitis, which practically tried to eat my baby's brain. They told me he would never come home with me. They told me to take him off life support and fall asleep with him, so when I woke up, I wouldn't have to see him die. 10 weeks later, he came home. Seven pounds, 13 ounces, and 20 inches long. I finished my junior year in the NICU and tried to go back as a senior, but his, his medical conditions just skyrocketed then. He needed two brain surgeries, four or five medical stays, and many overnights at Maine Med. It was a really rough time, but I'm thankful for my best friend that now is my girlfriend, his, Lewis's other mom, Sam. She's your firefighter, by the way. Yes, my firefighter. Oh, I'm shaking up here. I'm shaking up here, and I'm very thankful for Wanda and everything that she's helped me with. And all of you, thank you for having us. I really appreciate it. And talk about a shunt. Lewis has a shunt. Lewis has a shunt, which is pretty much what your spine does for you, what's your spinal cord. In his brain. Yes, it's in his brain. It drains the extra fluid in his brain to his abdominal, to his belly, pretty much. So his, uh, Cap, sorry. I promise I know all this, <laughs> to help his brain grow properly, what's left of it, pretty much. They're very amazed of where he is now. They told me he would never speak, he would never walk, he would never eat on his own, he would never do anything. They told me he was going to be a vegetable, that I was going to have to take care of him, and that he was going to be a burden on every single person he ever met. A doctor told me that, and it was the worst thing I ever ever, ever heard someone say. I'm very grateful I did not listen to him, and at 17 years old, I said, no, this is my baby, this is my life. You see him now playing with a balloon. They told me he would never do that. <laughs> Taking care of him is hard. My back hurts most nights. My I'm very tired all the time, but I would not change a single thing for the world. Everybody has been so nice to me. I have a following community on, on Instagram that love Lewis and ask about him daily. I have people like Wanda in my life, that people like Laura and Tim that ask about him and help me take care of him. I'm just so grateful. Thank you. I felt it was important to have Angie share that part of, of what her journey has been. So again, at Pride Parade, I met Lewis and his mom, Angie. And I was amazed by Lewis's smile. Despite the fact that he couldn't walk or speak very many words or that he needed help being fed, it struck me that Lewis was always smiling and saying hi and blowing kisses to everybody who passed by. Let me see if I can get him to. Can I, can you blow a kiss? Mwah. Mwah. That's he just is fascinated by the microphone. <laughs> He's gonna get mad at me for that, okay. Lewis was a stark reminder to me that despite the daily struggles that I face, it was nothing compared to the challenges that Lewis will face every day for the rest of his life like learning to stand or feed himself. Most of you will go to high school and hopefully eventually to college. Lewis success, Lewis's successes will be measured a little bit differently, but nonetheless just as important. I was struck by meeting Angie Ross, Lewis's mom. She's clearly devoted to her son and very aware of his needs and attentive to him. I was so impressed by how Angie handled herself 
at such a young age in the face of having a child with such extraordinary challenges as Lewis has. Angie even went to battle with his transportation company because the doctors advised that it was best for his, his car seat to rear face. Um, and that was a complication for the transportation company. But that's the person Angie is. She advocated for her son and that car seat faces rear because that is the safest choice for Lewis. The more I got to know them, the more I was impressed by Lewis's mom. She has an Instagram account to share information and news about Lewis's progresses and challenges. She loves her son. She's not ashamed of him. He's an important human being in this world. She often advises and supports other moms whose children have cerebral palsy and hydrocephaly. These moms donate and share equipment that their children outgrow or no longer need. Lewis has, um, they purchased a recently a bath chair called a Splashy. And what this has allowed them to do is, Lewis can be put in this seat and be given a bath. Lewis, on a hot day like today, can sit outside in a waiting pool because of this one plastic seat. It's a plastic molded seat, and yet it cost $400. $500 for a molded plastic seat, but it was life-changing for them. And that made me think, how are these families doing this, getting these important pieces of equipment that are gonna change their everyday lives? Lewis loves his uncle Justin's football games. He's a football fan. And he's recently made some friends that he enjoys spending time with. He doesn't care about their clothes or who they hang out with. He doesn't care if they're popular kids. He just wants to say hi and be their friend. Recently, Lewis started playing t-ball. Lewis has a life. One of my future goals for this family is to help them get a handicap accessible van so that Lewis can go on trips and excursions and football games and his baseball games and family events um, so that they're able to do that with ease. Kind kindness doesn't require much at all. Just the de desire to be above the negativity in the world and to be something different. Do little things like holding a door for someone or big things, just do something. Volunteer and be a positive source of light in this community. We need it. Each of you need it. I need it. And I really hope that I get to see all of you this summer volunteering for Stuff the Bus or, or coming to Right Brain Club. I would really enjoy that. I've met quite a few of you and you're awesome kids and don't let anybody tell you that you're not. You're great individuals who care about yourselves in this community. Be a different person today when you walk out this door and into these hallways. It doesn't take much. It takes very little, but it's important and we need it as a community. I'd like to thank you all for having me here and thank Ms. Hool for inviting me. And um, I'm not sure who's taken over at this point. Hi, I'm Alicia, and this is Jersey, Isabella, and Vanessa. We are in the JMG program here at the junior high. In JMG, we do a lot of volunteer work in our school and community. We have a lot of opportunities to help other people. It's actually one of my favorite things about JMG. We've helped Wanda a lot, and she's so much fun to work with. Over the summer, Wanda told Miss Hool about someone she had met and how much she wanted to help them. She actually told us about you, Angie and Lewis. She told us how awesome you were and how you do so much for the other moms, Angie, and how sweet and kind Lewis is. We decided we wanted to, to help in some way. For the last six years, JMG has run an annual school-wide pay it forward penny drive. We have a good time with it and it's like a competition. Each year we've used the money to pay it forward to someone and this year we wanted to pay it forward to you. This whole school has been raising money since the beginning of April, and 
We are really excited to show you how we used it. We would like to surprise you with a few things. We may have had a little help with what you needed. We heard that you do a lot and work, Angie, to take care of Lewis. So, so we wanted to make sure you were taking care of yourself, too. So we got you a luxury spa gift black basket to help you distress. We also heard that you love Target, so we'd like to give you a $100 gift card to Target. <laughs> Wanda told us that you haven't had a new phone in a while, and that a lot of money goes towards paying for things for Lewis, so we wanted to do something big for you. We got you a brand new iPhone 6S. And what's the point of a phone if you can't text and call with it? We wanted to get you six months of straight talk, and Walmart dona donated another three months, so you have nine months total of unlimited minutes and unlimited texting. Of course, we also wanted to do something for Lewis, too. We heard he even has a birthday coming up. So, Lewis, we got you a few things. First, we got you a really cool activity cube. Lewis, we heard you love music. We got you some nice loud instruments so you can play mom all the music you want. Mom will love that. We heard that you also like cars, so we went ahead and got you some wooden ramp racers. Wanda told us how much you love Paw Patrol, too, so I definitely wanted to get you some Paw Patrol toys. We heard that you like to be outside, so we got you a really cool umbrella for your chair to use when you're out. It can protect you from the sun and keep you dry in the rain. We found out that you're learning to eat on your own, too, so we wanted to get you something to help. We got you a new puku bowl and utensil holders. And just in case we miss anything you need or want, Lewis, we got you and your mom a $200 gift card to Walmart. We're not quite done yet. There's a few other things we got for you that we heard you really, really needed. And we're probably the most excited about these. First, Lewis, we heard that you really wanted an iPad, not only for fun stuff, but also to help you with therapy. So Ms. Hull, our JMG teacher, spoke to a Gramtastic Connection, a nonprofit that helps kids access to technology. And Leslie Morissette, the director, donated an iPad, an outer box case, and a stand, and a stuff, stuffed frog, all for you. And to go with the iPad, we wanted to make sure you could get some apps. So we got you a $50 Apple Store gift card. While researching what you needed, we discovered how expensive some of the equipment, equipment Lewis really needs is. So Angie, we wanted to help. We heard Lewis is working on standing, so we wanted to get him something he'd be able to practice with. We, we were able to get Lewis the Upsy from Firefly. The Upsy will allow Lewis to walk with Angie safely and get used to being on his feet. And we heard about a seat that would help Lewis a lot. It's called the go-to seat, which can be used for almost anything, working at a desk, eating at a table, playing on the floor, and more. The seat is pricey, but thanks to an anonymous additional donation, we are able to get it for Lewis. Uh, 
I asked to steal the mic for a minute because you guys could not hear what Angie said to me about the OPSI. She said, my son's going to walk. This device is a tool that helps kids with Lewis's condition work on their walking ability. And you guys couldn't hear her say that, but she was saying, he's going to walk, he's going to walk. Lewis and Angie, we're so glad you came today and that we were able to meet you. Thank you, Wanda, for letting us know about them and speaking today. We hope you guys liked everything we were able to get for you. All we ask in return is that you continue to pay it forward to others. Sanford Junior High students, uh, even if you put one penny in a bucket, one penny, a nickel, a dime, a quarter, dollar bills, together as a school, you raised $2,900, ladies and gentlemen. That is unbelievable. I'm not sure how many principals get to stand up and uh, just really feel as proud and as honored as I am to say that I am principal of Sanford Junior High because of the kindness uh, you all exhibit each and every day. Um, I want to thank you all. I want to give a huge thank you to Tara Hole and the JMG program for making this event unbelievable today. Wanda, thank you very much for coming in um, and presenting some kind words. And Angie, Sam, and Lewis, it's very, very nice to meet you. Uh, Sanford Junior High, this concludes our Pay It Forward event for today. I am going to ask you, I know you're all going to want to come down and probably high five Lewis. Nice, nice little wave, little air knuckle. Hey, buddy, I'm on the way out is completely fine. Guys, let's make it a great day, and thank you very much again for being an amazing school.